Hello and welcome to Rhino Sports Talk episode 7. And um, it's about to be February, so it's been two full months of these podcasts, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So on to episode 7. So the first topic, I got a, I got four topics, or five topics here I'm going to talk about. First one is the championship, championship series in the NFL. So the NFC Championship and the AFC Championship. And uh, I guess I'm going to go in chronological order here. And um, if you haven't really heard it, well, before I get into that, if you haven't seen it, the Pro Bowls this week, and I wrote an article about how to fix it because it's kind of boring and stupid and not very not very entertaining and not very good game and kind of overrated and stuff. So if you haven't read that, go read it. Link's in the description there. So... But we're going to move on to the NFC and AFC Championship, starting with the AFC, obviously. And um, this was a really good game. It was between the Patriots and Broncos. And I guess the real key of the game was the the, <laughs> the Broncos had the lead the whole game. I, as I didn't really realize this as I was watching it, but they were leading the whole game, which is always a good thing. But it kind of showed that the Broncos are vulnerable on defense a little bit because Patriots had over 300 total yards on the Patriots or on the Broncos' defense. And that's really good. And it looked a lot like the first game that they had where it was just the Patriots doing their thing on offense and they couldn't really run it. Broncos kind of ran it. They only had 99 yards, so that's not very good. About the same penalty-wise, about the same amount of time possessed. What was really key there was the Patriots had two turnovers, the Broncos won, and also the Broncos defense got it. Hit, they hit Peyton Man- or not Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, 20 times in that game, and that's always a good thing if you can get to one of the legends and create some chaos. Get hit, hurry him, hit him, sack him, do whatever they really whatever you really need to do, and if you can get to Brady and do that, you're going to be a lot more... You're going to have a lot better game. And who really did that the best, in my opinion, was Von Miller. He had two and a half sacks. Uh, interception as well. Really early in the game, that was really key interception for them, in my opinion. But, and so did Darian Stewart. He had one a little bit later on a kind of a duck that, ma- that Tom Brady threw, and he kind of just jumped in front of it, grabbed it, picked it off, so... That was really good. I think the defense looked really sharp that game. They had four sacks total. Derek Wolf looked really good too. And a bunch of tackles. It like about everyone got in on that and I think the defense is set for next week and all that kind of good stuff. I it looks really good. The only thing that really worries me for the Super Bowl is Manning and the offense. Yeah, he did have 176 yards and th- on 32 attempts and a cold day for Denver, but what really emerged to me was Owen Daniels. He had two catches, both for touchdowns for 33 yards and three targets. He's a premium red zone threat with Demarius not really doing anything. Demarius had uh, two catches for 12 yards on seven targets, so he needs to step up his game a little bit. Manuel Sanders was good, as always, and really sticks out to me is they had the Broncos had eight different guys catch a pass, and that's really good. You have different variety, different guys catching, doing stuff, moving the ball, and all that good stuff. You can't really guard them. They're kind of like the Pan- or the Cardinals, where you have a bunch of different wide receiver options to throw to. But the big thing for the next week is can the Broncos get a rushing attack going? They didn't do very well in the, against the Patriots. They did have 99 yards, like I said, but... A lot of it that they had, they still had over. Well, they had 30 rushes exactly for 90 yards, so it wasn't really that good. C.J. Anderson did average four and a half per rush, which is it's pretty good. He did rip off a 30 yarder, so that's always a good thing. I don't really see the Broncos unless they get really balanced on defense or offense, I should say, doing that much in respect to what the Panthers can do. So it's going to be more of a defensive battle is what they're going to have to hope for. So we're going to see what, see what their plan is for going into the Super Bowl. And they had a good plan against the Patriots. And 
the Steelers. So let's see what uh, Kubiak and uh, whoever the uh, Gase can uh, come up with. Not Gase. Who's the? I don't know who the offensive coordinator is anymore. But see what they come up with, and then that's how you can judge the Super Bowl. But now moving on to the NFC Championship. The NFC Championship is or was pretty one-sided in my opinion. You had Cam Newton throw for 300 yards and a bunch of different receivers catch for a bunch of yards. But like what happened last week and a couple games before that with the Panthers, they jumped out to a huge lead in the first half, going up 17-0 off of a Ted Ginn run and then a Corey Brown pass, both two speedsters. And I'm, I'll talk about the Super Bowl here in a little bit. But and then you see Carolina or not Carolina the Cardinals sorry score uh, to start the second half well not start it there there's about five minutes left in the sec in the second quarter and then Kim Newton responded right back led the team down he got another touchdown third quarter came they scored two more times one field goal one run uh, Carson Palmer threw for a touchdown in the fourth it was really two it was really over made it 34-15. And then kind of Carolina put the exclamation point on by having a five-yard pass from Newton to Devin Funches with the two-point on top. And then Keekley had a interception return to end the game with five minutes left. So what really stands out to me in that one is the Panthers defensively did a lot of good stuff. And they had, I think it was four interse- yep, four interceptions of Carson Palmer, that's that's not really expected from this defense. I mean, yeah, their linebackers and line are really good, but their corner corners outside of Norman aren't very insanely good. And then if you look at the Arizona side of the ball, Palmer didn't really throw it really well. He had 230 on 40 attempts with one touchdown, four picks, like I said. And who really caught the ball, when you really think about the Cardinals, they had – I, I three, I'd say at least three top tier receivers in John Brown, Fitzgerald, and Floyd, and then you'd have Javen Brown and J.J. Nelson and well, Fells is a tight end, but Nelson and Javen Brown being a little second tier, like they'd be two or threes on other teams, and they're four and five. So you thought they'd have the type of offense to exploit the Carolina defense, and they couldn't do it that way. So. Uh, their defense obviously is gonna be a good. It's gonna be really good for this game. So I think it'll be more of a defensive matchup just because of how good both the Carolina and Denver defense is. And with the Panthers, they were really balanced this week. They had 300 yards passing, like I said, and then 150 rushing. So that's another thing to watch in that Super Bowl too. Is can the Broncos contain Cam Newton? Can they contain uh, Fozzie Whitaker and Jonathan Stewart and all those guys that run it a lot. And Ted Ginn, too, he, he kind of just showed up one rush for 22 yards kind of thing. That's not really impressive, but still. And then what are they going to do with Olsen and Brown? Or I guess Brown kind of just showed up this week, too. But I think this is going to be one of the best, super better Super Bowls we're going to watch or see in the past couple of years, only because of how defensive these two teams are and kind of the lack of offense. Well, Carolina obviously has an off explosive offense, but they don't it's not really consistent like they scored a bunch during Seattle, but it was mainly Cam Newton and it was mainly Cam Newton running it or their defense and then during the Cardinals they couldn't really they scored a bunch on offense and had one defensive touchdown and that's not really typical for them. So I'm going to write a little piece coming up next week with storylines, predictions, what to look for, all that good jazz, kind of not backgroundy, but more of me from being a former former football player, kind of what I'm going to watch on that. Not really in-depth like ESPN or any of them, but maybe more fan-relatable. So look forward to that next week, and I'm going to move on to the next topic.